MK Sullivan, Danny Moreno. Welcome to the podcast. Nice to see you both. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having us, Dylan. It's an honor. We're going to be using this as an opportunity to share about a new creative endeavor that you two are launching within the Free Trail Network that we are ecstatic about. Danny, you've been on the show before, so maybe MK will start with you. Tell the audience about the sub hub and uh, where the idea came from. Yeah, I was uh, actually listening to a podcast with Finn and and Tim Tolfson, and they were talking about how people kind of drag them sometimes because they only cover ultra races. And he was like, we just don't have the bandwidth to cover, you know, all of these topics. And I texted Danny like immediately. And I was like, dude, why don't we start a podcast that's just about sub ultra racing? And she was like, absolutely. And we were on the phone together, like, that afternoon coming up with the plan. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just a, an area that is just not quite as covered as it could be because it's relatively new and upcoming still, uh, not really new, but, uh, definitely gaining popularity. And so, uh, we're just going to try to shed some more light on it. Yeah. And I will say for myself too, for the podcast I've been on, I would say 98% of them always start with asking, what is a sub ultra? Why do I do <laughs> sub ultra races? And so after saying that for maybe 12 episodes at this point, it's like, ah, then maybe there's something here. Why do I always get asked these questions about the distance? Yeah. And maybe to add my own perspective, I am obsessed with sub ultra distance racing, even though in my own athletic career, I've very much focused on the long course stuff, but I have been thinking for months about how free trail can, you know, be part of this conversation, lead in this conversation about this wildly exciting segment of our sport. And so when Corinne came to me and said, Danny and MK want to start a podcast, my immediate response was... (laughs) Let's do it. So maybe with that being said, from your perspectives, maybe Danny, we can start with you on this one. Like what is exciting about the space right now? Uh, You know, as somebody who makes your living and focuses your athletic career within the subultra space, why should people care? Um, A lot of reasons. Um, So I've been, yeah, I've been pretty much been sticking to the subultras, even though I felt a lot of pressure early on in my career to go longer. And to me, they're just a different type of racing. They're very exciting. There's a lot of redlining. Uh, you can go a lot faster. And I would say in the last few years, the racing has gotten even more aggressive and the style of racing has become more intense, which I've really appreciated. Um And so as a fan of just running in general, it's a really cool nexus in trail running where it kind of men melds the worlds of like long distance mountain, but also, you know, fast speed, which I think is always really attractive to people. And so, you know, combine that with the accelerated media assets that have been created in the past few years of surrounding some series, people are starting to see how exciting, you know, a two to four hour race in the mountains can be and how there's a lot of shifting because there's a, a growing landscape in the competitive area of the sport. And so these races are just getting so much closer and so much more competitive um, that I just feel like it's a really cool introduction to the sport, no matter where you are uh, in your running lifestyle or career. MK, anyone, anything you want to add there? No, I think that was perfect. I yeah. agree with with all yeah. of that. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's worth to just like put a finer point on it that they are crazy exciting and crazy competitive. But as you were just saying, Danny, it's also much more approachable to the masses, to a wider running audience who would otherwise sign up for a big city half marathon when they see a Cirque series race and they think, huh, well, I can go march around in the mountains for a couple of hours. No big deal. <laughs> So I think it's a great opportunity to indoctrinate people into our culture and into our community. MK, maybe from your perspective, I think one of the things that I've always been thinking about is the at least perceived imbalance in importance between the North American trail scene and the European trail scene. I know you had your first exposure to the European racing circuit last year, the Mont Blanc Marathon, where you performed exceptionally well, but... Maybe what is your hope for enhancing the importance and visibility of sub ultra distance racing specifically here in the U S yeah. Uh, so we talked to Grayson 
and Andy this week. And a, a quote that Grayson had that really stuck out to me was when she went over to challenge Selena that like sub ultra racing is like their Super Bowl. Like over in Europe, this sub ultra distances are have been around for years and people have been paying attention to them for years. And um, so just to bring that awareness over to the US, and I think especially for younger athletes, um, you know, college kids that are pretty fast, like your Adam Petermans who come out and a lot of them and Hayden Hawks, they just go straight into the ultra, which is really cool in some cases, but there's also this whole world of sub ultra races that are still um, fast and not out there for 14 hours. And so I think just bringing that awareness over here and turning it into something exciting that people want to pay attention to and watch is just such a big opportunity right now. Yeah. Danny, anything you want to add there? Yeah, I think just, you know, going back to the next gen of trail athletes and, you know, in this, we just talked to the trail team, Andy and Grayson teaser, an episode that's coming out. Um, but for younger athletes who are in college, like the distance you have available to you is 5k, 6k, and maybe a 10k in the big scheme of the running world, that's still really short. And, you know, an athlete that may not, that may not be that distance that they prosper at, you know? And so with the sub ultras, giving an athlete two, three, four hours still when they're in their like young twenties as an option. Uh, I think bringing a bigger highlight to that is important because, you know, there's some runners that they need that time to get that speed and to get that strength before they're kind of reaching those top results, et cetera. And that doesn't mean you have to go to the road marathon or the half marathon either. So just highlighting that. And again, just like highlighting the approachable, Ness, I don't think that's a word <laughs> of trail running <laughs> in America. Approachability. <laughs> uh, in America, like when I started trail running, I, I literally thought my options were either to run 100 miles or to do sky running. Like those were my only two options in my head. Uh, mm. So for people who, you know, are later on in their life and finding running, they have the sub ultra option. And if you're in America, you do have tons of sub ultra options and they're there. And we want to highlight that. Yeah, no kidding. And I think it is really exciting for the next generation as somebody who represents the aging cohort in the professional (laughs) ranks. I ran my first 100 miler when I think I was 22 years old, right? And looking back, it's like, wow, if I had an opportunity to develop for those first five, seven years at shorter distance, maybe I would have a few extra years on the back end. And of course, a lot of the guys who I sort of came up with in the sport because of the fact that the emphasis was very much on the 100K, 100 mile distance racing. Obviously we had that period where overtraining and over racing syndrome was really a a terrible thing that affected a lot of my friends and colleagues in the sport. And so I think, yeah, again, the exciting thing about sub ultra distance racing among other things is that it gives athletes a chance to really develop and have a long-term exposure to our wonderful sport. Danny, episode one is up now. I've listened to it myself. Maybe tell the audience what they can expect from that episode and then what you have coming up, at least in the short term. Yeah. So episode one, one is kind of just like kicking off 2023 with me and MK, uh, introducing you guys to the podcast, why we did it, uh, why now what's exciting about the sub ultra space. We highlight some series that we're really excited about and, you know, in conjunction with that, a couple of races. And then one of my favorite parts was just kind of highlighting a couple, we were North American dominant, but choosing a male and a female that we think people should have their eyes on for 2023 in the sub ultra space. And it's not your typical, go-tos, you know, top dogs that were in the results last year. Uh, I, I will say that because they're, they are top dogs, but yeah. And then we kind of give you some insight to upcoming episodes and kind of the themes that we're going to be exploring in 2023. So MK, what are, what's coming up? I mean, you guys have mentioned that you talked to Andy and Grayson, but what else is coming up in the short term? Um, The next episode is actually going to be Kimber Maddox and myself. Danny interviewed us about the formidable 50 K and our results there. And then, yeah, we talked to the trail team. Um, Hopefully also going to be doing some interviews with the actual athletes themselves in upcoming weeks. But before that, Danny and I will be going over qualifying for the U S championships and other series um, because we all know that can be a little bit confusing. And so we're just going to kind of, 
run through a couple different series and explain how to get there. Amazing. Danny, maybe final word to you. If you can just tell people where they can find the show, where they can follow you guys on Instagram, both your personal accounts and the new Subhub account. Yes. So the new Subhub account is the underscore Subhub underscore. Uh, you can find us on Instagram. We are related. We are in the free trail family. Uh, so you'll be able to find us on that website as well. Uh, and then you have our personal Instagrams. I'm Dan underscore yell underscore a and then MK. I think you're MK Sullivan, just like just e- MK Sully and Sully. The I. Yeah, Sweet. we'll make sure to put links in the show notes. Well, thank you both for the opportunity to work together. I'm very excited about this. And like I said, when Corinne came to me with this potential opportunity, I immediately said, yeah, I think that's something that we would like to do. So, and you guys make a great team and uh, we're glad to support you on this journey. And we're grateful you would do it within the Free Trail Network. Thanks. We're We're excited for the support. (laughs) Yeah. And excited to be part of the Free Trail fam. Like you guys are leading as far as like media companies or families in the space. And so we're just really part excited to be part of the family. Appreciate that so much. We're here for the trail culture. Trail (laughs) culture. (laughs) All right, guys. Good luck. Let's we're excited for the journey. Thanks.